Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a couple of extremely unusual little telescopes. A uh, number of little features that are kind of quirky and strange about them. And that's of course of great interest to me. So let's take a look at these. This one's a, an SI Pentax uh, 50 millimeter, And this one is, I presume, it's, there's no nameplate on it, but I presume that this is a, a Sands and Streif 60 by 700 scope. So let's have a closer look at these two little goodies. The primary reason I grouped these two scopes together is uh, they have almost nothing in common except for this. Both of them have a side mounted focuser. See how this focuser comes out kind of through the middle here and like this is the same thing. Side Compare mounted. those with this focuser. Notice that this focuser is on the bottom. Uh, there's a, a rack down here on the bottom and the pinion is inside here mounted down to the bottom of the tube. Unlike this one and this one. This is a more standard, common, almost every 60 millimeter telescope, uh, at least from recent eras, seems to have this kind of a focuser. Uh, these are quite exceptional. And both of them have this. I don't think that means that they were made by the same manufacturer. Clearly, these are uh, quite different. The way they're made is quite different. But both of them have that interesting side mount kind of a focuser. A lot of the um, antique telescopes had something similar to this as well. And I've got a large Tinsley that also has something that works kind of like that. It's just kind of unusual and a little strange. Um, to my knowledge, this is the only Pentax that I know of that's like that. Let me give you some close-ups of those. Here's a close-up of the focuser. There's the little rack there. Here's a closer look at the Shy Pentax, or that's a high Pentax, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Anyway, um, it's very, very high quality build here. Heavy little telescope, 50 millimeter F600. Um, and it's a, the optics are superb, as you would expect. Another interesting feature about this is that this star diagonal is not removable. That's attached permanently. You can change the eyepieces, at least with some effort. So you can change the eyepieces, uh, but you can't remove the star diagonal. It's strictly for that kind of use. So if you wanted to use this for straight view viewing, a lot of these little scopes in this size have a little image erector kind of a deal that goes in there and so forth. Not this one. Strictly right angle viewing with this telescope. Interesting, isn't it? Here's a little better look. The finder over here is just a little peep scope finder. The color is also a little bit unusual. Uh, it's kind of a metallic gray color. Um, I don't know if I would call it my favorite, but it's not bad. It's, it's an interesting color choice, that's for sure. Let me show you a couple of interesting features of this Sands and Streif. Uh, let's, uh, let's suppose I want to look at something near the zenith. Let's say, I don't know, maybe Vega, something like that. And, uh, uh oh, it's out of balance, isn't it? Well, that's nice because this has a little friction balance deal here. So you can change the balance, make it just right. By the way, this almost certainly would not have come with an inch and a quarter adapter. It's a standard uh, thread here. And it almost certainly would have had a, a 965 adapter and uh, 965 eyepieces. Uh, the way I got it, it had the inch and a quarter adapter, fine. Um, so I put an inch and a quarter. That's why this thing was too heavy this way. But uh, in any case, w with whatever you would be using back here, it's very nice to have the ability to adjust this like so. And of course you've got a tension adjustment here too. But let's suppose, let's go back to my hypothetical. Let's suppose I want to look at uh, something that's very close to the zenith. All I have to do is uh, use the finder and uh oh. Most of you have already detected 
that this thing is strange. It's got a bizarre, crazy, insane, altitude only kind of a horseshoe mount here. Typically, uh, little telescopes like this have a little angled mount for, for that. Even the little Pentax has a proper ability to look at the zenith, assuming, I guess, that this has to be on the edge of a table or something. But look at this. You can move the scope all the way to vertical. You can't do that with this scope. You can get maybe 80. Yeah, maybe 80. I don't think you can get 90. So you're going to get only a limited part of the sky with this scope. And things that are at the prime observing location straight up are not visible to you with this telescope. I'm not sure if it was intended to be strictly for terrestrial use. That's a possibility, but they put an astronomical finder on here. Normally they wouldn't do that. This is a contradiction. Here's a clo closer look at the focuser. See the little rack there? The mechanism on this thing is beautiful, nice, smooth. It's, uh, it's extremely well made. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these two interesting, weird, quirky little telescopes from the late 1960s, early 1970s. Thank you for watching.